Sending on the low for a grill. Sending on that. Yeah. 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 It's the world's most dangerous podcast. Dope dealers. What's happening, everybody? Dope dealer podcast. It's Jamal Doman. Toby Hicks. What's good, man? Man, we here. Episode 20. Hey, man. Episode 20. The dub, man. The 2-0. The big 2-0. Yeah, yeah. Big 2-0, man. Hey, shout out to my cousin. That, that song that y'all guys heard and, and going to hear again at the end of the podcast, that is my little cousin, man. That's Mike B out of North Philly, man. That's my cousin Edie's son. Yeah, I like that. that yeah, was a nice track. that's a new track called Four Grip, man. He's he's on iTunes. I had I went to as you know I went to my grandmother's funeral, so a lot of my these young cats I ain't seen them in a while. Mm-hmm. They grown now, and um, my other cousin was like, yeah, you know Mikey and and Ramid rap. I was like, they rap, and he was yeah, he was like, yeah, go to his, go to the Instagram page. I went to the Instagram page. They listen, they got he got a video. I'm surprised for they didn't call you. Yeah, he, they you have know a, how the relatives do yeah. that. Anybody doing any entertainment, they call the the relative that's doing it in Cali normally. Yeah, so um um yeah, so I I looked him up. He has a video for that song too, that's man. A nice check him song out. That's a, I am Mike B on on um Instagram, and we're gonna be playing a lot of his music, man. That's for up, and that's a when I heard it, you know, I listen, and my cousin. But I was actually like, yo, this is some dope shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to like, be honest yeah. with you. I dug it, too. The beat, if I the hook, even though melody, your yeah. relative, I would say, man, that track ain't shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. shit's dope. And I ain't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to my, co- my cousins, but that's that's dope, man. Shout out to my little cousin, Mike B, man. Um, that's Edie, my cousin Edie's son, man. What's happening, man? We here? Yeah, man. Episode 20, man. Yeah, man. You was just, what were you, somewhere this Orlando, recently? Orlando. Yeah. Shout Orlando. out to everybody who came out to the Orlando Improv uh you know, to check out Felipe, and I was there, Rodrigo, yeah. we had a good time. I hear that's a dope improv, man. Yeah, that's a nice one, and, and great staff at the Orlando oh, yeah. Improv. Yeah, they looked out, took took good care of us. Uh, it was a good time. Orlando Improv, if Raining you're listening. It hot. Yeah, if you're listening, man, bring us down. Bring the Dope Dealer Podcast comedy show down there, man, so we can get down, man. So listen, man, let's get right down to the uh, dope story of the week. We're talking NBA free agency, man. Yeah, man, woo. Yeah, the man. King is <laughs> here. They said it was going to be hot and heavy, and it hit hot and heavy. The king is here. Yeah, the king is here, man. So let's start. What's before up, we even get to, Before we get to that, let's go to the first domino that was actually the king. Well, the 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 wannabe king, I don't know, was is not here, and that's Paul George. Yeah, that, that now, yeah. Yeah, let's get let's get people who haven't uh don't know us that well. Uh Toby Hicks is a diehard Laker fan. I am a diehard Philadelphia 76er fan. So just let y'all know that. But we also NBA Laker fans. Laker Nation. Too. Yeah, he Laker Nation. I'm Sixer Nation. So Paul George, Toby Hicks, oh, was man. supposed to be in a signed, seal, and delivered deal. What I happened? mean, you grew up. In L.A., I mean, close by. Palm, Palmdale. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to call that L.A. Yeah, that's not L.A. That's but clear. it's close enough. And He grew up a Laker fan. Yeah. Said it was his dream of being a Laker. Yeah. Yeah. What and, happened? And, and didn't even give him a meeting. I mean, that's what killed me to stay in Oklahoma City. Man, people are saying that. They think Russell got him in a room and just said, hey, motherfucker, if you leave, I'm going to beat your ass. Russell. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. Yeah, no. Westbrook crazy. That's what happened, man, because that didn't make no sense. Now uh, our, our engineer Paul was just saying some Paul was saying something about what PG said. Uh, PG said what? Uh, yep, Lori, we happy. Uh, LeBron and Laker, hell yeah. Yeah, uh, PG said Paul. He's Paul getting the mic George again. said that uh, if the Lakers wanted him, they should have taken him last year. Yo, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, but that but yeah. that wouldn't have made sense. You said you was coming. Why give up the whole team? You know, I mean, what could you really be enjoying in Oklahoma City? I've been there, and it ain't shit there. And maybe I'm biased because yeah. I was there for 15 minutes and got locked up <laughs> and ended up staying up there for four months. So you're biased. But yeah, Oklahoma biased. City is close to Palm, it's similar to Palmdale. Yeah, it's that, but I mean, shit, man. And then I think, you know what, I think he really got, he started acting like, you know, he got, he got, he got hurt when uh, they started going after Kawhi too. 
But damn, shit, Golden State got four, now five cats. You had to get three. So, but I think he just wanted it to be him and LeBron. He didn't want to be number three. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I mean, well, he's number two in OKC. Even his parents wanted him to come. You see him sitting on the front row at the games when they come to town? That shocked everybody. Yeah, that man, how shocked do you do me that, that he shit? didn't. The, you know, then and and OKC. He didn't even talk to Magic. That's what really got me. Like yeah, you, you have a choice. To, you have a choice to go where you want to, stay where you want, play where you want. You've earned that right. But damn, you couldn't even meet with Magic. What was you couldn't about? even talk on the phone with him. Yeah, that that didn't make that didn't make sense. But I thought Magic had to. I think you know what it, uh, people were saying on the radio. The Lakers took him for granted. They just assumed that they ain't really had to do. Well, that. he said that. Court, Shit. court him. Yeah. But I mean, but well, why didn't why didn't Magic court him? I mean, why did they just take him coming for granted? Man, I I, I really can't. I I don't understand that shit. I mean, but you know, I mean, because obviously they had tampering charges anytime they try to talk to him. So he should have known by that shit. Like, okay, look, they he know the Lakers wanted him. He right. know the fans wanted him. He know everybody in town wanted him. Right, right. What the hell is you doing staying in Oklahoma City? I might understand if it was a different city. And I'm not trying to shit on Oklahoma City, but when you got a choice of Oklahoma City and L.A. and you rich no matter where you at, how could you choose Oklahoma City? Hey, man. The only reason that you would choose Oklahoma City over L.A. is if you if you couldn't afford and it. He signed for four, but also he got more money from Oklahoma City. They can get more money for whatever. And he signed for the whole day. And I'm shocked. I'm thinking maybe to sign one year and then come yeah, next anything. year. But he signed for he's in it for he's in it for the long run. So you know they're going to get rid of Carmelo. They Carmelo makes too much money. I think they're going to try to stretch him or yeah. Because Carmelo uh, said I'm not coming off the bench. I'm not doing shit. Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> Give me my 28 million. This is last year, right? Carmelo yeah, come off the last year. one. He got yeah. He getting that 28. They're going to try million. to trade him or stretch buy him. him out. Yeah, ain't nobody yeah, gonna, ain't nobody else going. to. Well, they might take this yeah. as the last year, but they they gonna try to buy him out. I think they re-signed Jeremy Grant. I like Jeremy Grant. He's he plays good defense. But other than yeah. that, I mean they. Let's just look at it from a basketball viewpoint. Mm -hmm. How do you think? Does he really think he's gonna win there? This, I mean, they got beat in the first round, and they they not they don't have any more money. They right. can't even add nobody. Right, right, right. Well, well, we'll see. He's Paul stuck G in hey. Oklahoma City. Well, have it wasn't fun. like he was getting out the first round with the with the Lakers either. He said the fishing was better. <laughs> so have fun fishing. All right, so the, that was the first domino. The second domino and probably the biggest domino. Uh, Ain't no probably. Yeah, it is the biggest domino. The big fish everybody was waiting on. Uh, LeBron James. Sh shock. Well, I don't know shock because a lot of people had him leaning towards going with the Lakers. And he, I, he did it. I didn't think the Lakers were the best situation for him. But he did magic. Well, it was the best situation right, for him. Explain that. Now, the reason why it was the best situation, because it was all the way around. You you had all these different uh, vehicles, okay? First of all, family, okay? Now, the only other choices that he really could have had, would, to me, would have been Philadelphia or Houston. Houston would have had to get rid of everybody. It would have been him. Then Tony would have had to suit up <laughs> in Houston and shit. So that that was kind of out of it. And Harden didn't really act like he wanted him there anyway. Well, especially after Houston gave Chris Paul all that money. Yeah. Which and we're, so, we're going to talk about. I don't know about that. And so that was the thing. And then Philly, you know, the family didn't want to go to Philly. Plus, he just started. Philly got to live in Plus, Philly. Here, here go the thing is, though, too. Philly got Man, some nice places. Okay. They could have lived in Villanova. Yeah, but if you look, all you got to do is look at look at what Magic's and, and uh, Rob Palenka have done in just one year. So LeBron weighed out all those things, and he said, look, he said, there is no real place that I can go and be guaranteed. The only place he was going to be guaranteed a ring would have been going to Golden State. Which wasn't happening. Okay. So then when, once you're not guaranteed that, then you look at everything else. You look at, okay, they said off LeBron the got stuff. right. Yeah, yeah, all the off-the-court stuff. And, okay, out of anybody in the NBA that that he had to choose from, who you going to trust more than Magic Johnson? Y'all, Philly didn't even have a general manager. Yeah. He'd had to talk to the coach. What the coach is the general manager. Well, yeah, he's That's acting, great. but I'm just yeah. saying, so there, there's that situation. Okay, do you want to spend the, the last four years? And then I think it just it became, you know, the weather, the schooling. He didn't want to put his kids in school in Philly. The kids don't have to go to school in Philly. They could have still lived in L.A. and he could have. Yeah, but then you're away from your family. Yeah. Why, why, why do that when he could be right here? With the most storied franchise in NBA but history, you have, with I the mean, purple and gold on. By LeBron going here, one thing he he broke three uh, things that critics, his haters, used against him. He he smashed them. They said he was ring chasing. 
He's a ring chaser. Well, he ain't winning no ring right now. Not the way right the now. Lakers no. constructed. Uh, uh, you know, they used to hold that over here. He's a ring chaser. Um, oh, he he has it easy in the East. The reason he keeps going to the championship, he's, he's in the East. He'll never come out West. Well, he broke yeah, that myth. Yeah, He'll yeah. never come out West and face have to face, you know, Golden State in the West. Well, he broke that myth. He came out there. Um, it was a third thing. I, f- I forgot what they used. I, 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 it'll come to me. But it was like them... He broke all that. You can't say that about him no more. You can't say he a ring chaser, and you can't say he's scared to come out, come out. Of hey, the but now. and then on top of this, man, like honestly, like let's just be real. Like when they had those family conversations, man, he couldn't overlook them this time. He had been overlooking his family in other cases or whatever. Not overlooking them, but you know, it was about where he wanted to be and who. It, but this time, he like. Cause man, look, I, I ain't even talking about his wife. Or you know, just Savannah's uh, saying, "Let's go to L.A." I'm telling you, Lil Bronny said, Dad, I want to go to L.A. and play. Mm. That's where the con- where more comp. I mean, that's that, I, I yes. guarantee you his son wanted to play here. He come out here, he play in the summer leagues and see how he is out here. And, you know, to play in this warm weather, he knew the school he was going to be able to go to. He knew the, the uh, former NBA player's sons that's going to be on the team. Right. You think he didn't want to? You think he didn't say, Dad, we got to go to L.A.? They begged him. Mm-hmm. The thing that's weird about me is he, you know, he went to a team that, let's be for real, and you, we, you, you know this, Laker fans are some of the biggest LeBron haters since his career yeah. started. Yes, and I, yeah, they I, were I'll the biggest that. LeBron haters, especially the Kobe fanatics. The Kobe fanatics hate LeBron James, so yes. now they're, you know, shout out to my homie Dewan Brown. You know, Dewan, I get into. It I was, you know, I, I mean, Dewan I was one is of a those. Kobe coat. And I was one of those. I mean, so you know, now at I'm that like, time, it's, it's, but, but to me, it's funny now. Over. Now y'all conflicted. Now, now no, y'all not, not conflicted because Kobe ain't playing no more. Now, if Kobe was still playing and they got rid of Kobe and then brought in LeBron, then I no, might but be I'm, conflicted. No, but it's 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 cats who hated hated on him still to this when he lost. They hated on him, and it was mainly the Kobe fanatics. Well, now he played for their team, which is funny to me. That's just you know, I don't know. It's just funny that y'all now y'all gotta like the guy now. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, it's I mean, because I, I was one of those. I mean, when he was when Kobe was in the league, I mean, I was a Kobe guy. So that's that, why I need mean, a Kobe in the league. This is you know, it's cats out there like Dewan Brown is a he's the he's the president of the Kobe Colt. He yeah, believes it, Kobe is the greatest player of all time, better than Jordan, better than everybody. He believes it's Kobe, and then everything else is second. And that's why when it, when there was a lot of arguments that uh, um, about the Jordan Lebron debate. That's why Kobe fanatics, they go crazy when they hear that. Yeah. Because they believe it should be Kobe Jordan debate. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But but you know what? I mean, being a Kobe guy and all this, but, you know, I mean, now it's to a point where we have to be real with ourselves. I mean, and what I'm saying by this is like, okay, no one will ever probably ever touch the championship, you know, pedigree that Jordan had and winning all those rings mm-hmm. and never losing and all that. But, man, we got to be real with ourselves, man. LeBron is just bigger, stronger, faster, and barring a catastrophic injury, by the time he ends his career, he's going to have damn near every record. He's going to be scored over 40,000 points. So so people, I mean, I never thought I would say it, but, man, he's approaching that door where you're going to have to get, I mean, I'm going to have to say, okay, his shit outweighs what Jordan Mm -hmm. did. Now, you know, I I thought about this, uh, I think, yesterday, and I wonder wonder if this is some kind of, I don't know what to call it, some kind of LeBron master plan because he LeBron has to know that the Laker fans are what his biggest haters he know this he know yes. the Kobe fanatics yeah he know so what what's what's the best way to win over them fans who have hated you for them. years join a team and lead their team against that, a superpower yes like the Golden State Warriors if you can lead beat them motherfuckers yes, yeah if he can pull off, one, if you can pull that if he, off, if he can pull off one or two championships here in L.A., now, it ain't, to me, ain't even, if he won is one, enough. Yeah, one. If he come and beat Golden State one, the Kobe fanatics who have d- hated him and despised him his whole career, what can they say? That and I'm thinking, damn, is that LeBron master plan? Like that's the way to win them over. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna come over there and I'm gonna take a team that ain't even. Even people think we have no chance. I'm gonna take your team, the team that you love. People, we have no chance, and we're gonna win. And that, and you ain't gonna be able to say shit about me ever again. I mean, and the only thing, the only other place that he could have went to that would have compared to this is probably the Knicks, or uh, or possibly Philly. Like if he'd have won a championship with them after Philly ain't won in a while. Yeah. 
But but this is this is this yeah, is this part is the, of the yeah, plan. This is and see, and it, here's the other shit that you know people are. They said that LeBron gonna shoot. He's gonna film all this shit for a movie, and he got the rights to it. So that was part of the deal, also, yeah, man. man that's and smart. Then, and it's like just the bottom line well, is this, up, man. Shout out to Denny Live. See you out there. The the bottom line is this, man. Who you gonna trust more? I mean, if if I was LeBron or you, you're a veteran player of his stature, and you look at the situations you have, and you decide, okay, who am I gonna trust? I'm gonna put my faith in uh, Black Ass Magic in front of everybody else. Uh, hey, that's just me. I don't know. I, there was no other way to look at it. It's funny you talk about Magic because I was just about to pivot to him. Let's 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 talk about him because uh, that's why he said that he shit. He knew he comments. was coming. Somebody, yeah. I don't get nobody. I quit. He, he we already about knew. That. He already knew. Yeah, he knew. This everybody know. Fuck that tampering shit. This shit goes down. You know, motherfuckers know what's going on. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like a studio that's casting a movie. They already kind of know who they want in the roles. Yep. They're going to do auditions for a bunch of people, but they know they want fucking Denzel in that role. And Denzel, if he wanted, he got it. Yeah. They know they want Don Cheeto in that role. If he wanted, he got it. It's only if he don't have a schedule together. Maybe he's, you know, he's booked somewhere else or, you know, he don't want to do it. But other than that, studios know that tampering shit. Magic, that's why Magic, We I, people were like, man, why would Magic, even I said, why would he put a timetable on the stuff? Because he that? already knew. He already fucking knew what time it was, and, man. And, you know, like like I said, I mean, they're, they're uh, that's why he was so cocky people when he are made that changed, I mean, I'll fire myself. Nigga, you already knew. Magic, you already knew what the fucking then, time it yeah, was. And then, yeah, he, gonna, he, he said firing himself because he got 50 other jobs on top of it. He <laughs> wouldn't have said he going to fire himself if that was the only damn job he had. I right. want to put yeah. that shit on them. But- and it's funny, I the day before I dissed Magic, when they lost PG, I, I was on Facebook. I was like, that's inexcusable, them losing PG. And I, I said, tragic Magic. But the next day, they signed LeBron. So but, my apologies, Magic. That but I, my you thing, props on that. My thing is that I was reluctant when it came to LeBron because I just looked at it like, we know he's the best player in basketball and what he's done. There's no doubt about that. But I was just a little worried that Damn, he's been played a lot of ball all these years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just kind of afraid of the injury aspect at his age. But, you know, that's something that you just got to take a chance on or whatever. And we yeah. had to do it. And now I feel different. I mean, I know you recall, shit, I was the one who made a joke about him when he left Cleveland the first time. Yeah. And said that his mama was sleeping with his teammates. Yeah, that's yeah. why he yeah. left. Yeah. Uh, what was the teammate? The light-skinned dude. I forgot his name. Dante. Uh, Yeah, Dante. Yeah. Delonte West. Delonte West. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Where's he at? Yeah, but it wasn't oh, just him. Oh, LeBron got him. LeBron got him kicked out the league. All right, so um, he let's, definitely let's, did. let's keep it on Magic and the Lakers. Not only did they, the big, obviously they got the big fish, but they signed some interesting yeah, uh, I kinda, teammates yeah, for them. I want to yeah. hear your, as a Laker tra- fanatic. Yeah, Lance Stevenson. Uh, Lance Stevenson. I, I agree with that one because you got to bring somebody yeah. in because, see, the thing is, is that they know that they, there's no way they're going to ever be Golden State with the same way they play because mm-hmm. you're not going to find, there's not, enough human beings alive who can shoot the ball as well as mm-hmm. Clay and Steph. So you got to try other ways to beat them, and they just going to go bully ball type shit and with playmakers. And Lance Steven, any man, I mean, shit, you know he had respect for Lance. Yeah. He blew in his ear. He's Lance, like, I, I like Lance. Lance plays tough. Um, uh, you know, he can get you some buckets. He plays good defense. He hustles. Yeah, I, yeah he going to do a stupid, some stupid shit yeah, here and yeah. there. But I, I like him. Uh, Rondo, I like that signing too. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll keep his head, you know, on the same team with LeBron and everything. Yeah. And, you know, I hope uh, it still allows Alonzo to grow. And, I, ho- and yeah. I hope they don't trade him. I mean, I don't know. It's getting yeah. kind of weird. I mean, they probably would have made the deal, uh, you know, if they could have got Kawhi and gave up Alonzo. Yeah. And JaVale McGee, you know, it's uh, – I mean, he's gonna—he's a decent. We know what he is, or whatever. Yeah. You know, he's gonna Come play hard. Bench, yeah. He's gonna rebound. He's gonna—you know—he's gonna—he's gonna be open for mm-hmm. lobs, and he's gonna do a shacked in a fool moment every so often. Yeah. But you know, it's just interesting. Everybody like these three guys, like run these personalities. Yeah, they might be fighting in the fucking locker room. Yeah, but I mean, uh, Rondo uh, had a great season, great playoff. He can, you know, he can help LeBron bring up the yeah, ball. He had a we know he's one of the smartest players in, year, in the yeah. league. Um, but. People like who's going to start is ball. Who you ball? Yeah, yeah, the, ball yeah, still man. has to start. Yeah, right? yeah, you got to start. Line, yeah. that don't even make sense. But man. they saying Rondo was, was saying that they, I don't know if it, somebody was like he made. Yeah, Rondo doing to too much with yeah. that bullshit, man. Come he already, on, talking about he, he already said like he. I yeah, start. They, t- they said Rob Polinka told him, you know. Uh, yeah, they had that hard this conversation before yeah. they signed. I'm like, what, yeah. what's your role yeah. for the team? 
But to say, hey, you you know, you. But he he come off the bench backup. That's a solid. You know, Rondo is your backup point guard. That's you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how old is Rondo? He seems like he's been in the league for a long time. Yeah, right? he's in about his twelfth season. Wow. So he's like mid thirties. Yeah. yeah. Mid yeah. thirties. No. Nah, yeah. No. Yeah. No. Nah, nah, so I think he didn't even. I don't think he stayed off four years. I think he's probably like thirty. 31. Yeah, I think he left as a junior. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'll, I'll look it up while we do that. And uh, so they, they signed him but and got rid of Julius, Julius Randle, didn't sign him. What you think about that? That was kind of a tough one, you know, because this I, I kind of hated to see that happen, especially for that amount of money because, you know, they could afford it. But I know, you know, he wanted it multiple years and they didn't want to do that. But I hate to see him go because, you know, he came here. He got hurt that very first game. He battled back. He worked. Him, he worked himself. He lost weight. He turned into a, a decent, a good player, man. And now somebody else is about to reap the benefits of it. And I hate to see that. Yeah, shit. I don't. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but they. I, yeah, I think I would love him for him to stay in a. a Rondo, by the way, is thirty two. So he's yeah. still young. He's thirty two. Um, six one, uh, six nine wingspan. That's and the I'm other thing that's weird about Rondo is that you know if you're gonna bring in another point guard, they brought in another dude who played exactly like Lonzo. So he can't shoot either. I'm like, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing. But but when it comes to it, you know, playoffs and shit like that, I'd rather have Rondo on my team. This is a tough team. Yeah. This is, uh A lot of people said uh, LeBron must have told Magic that he wants to be surrounded with tough. Because we know mentally they ain't going to break. You know, Rondo ain't going to break mentally. Uh, uh, Lance do something stupid every once in a while, but he plays hard. He plays tough. He's not, you know, hey, he's, and not even, uh, he's not mentally weak. And even the rookie uh, Mo Wapner last night after he got dunked on, I mean that he got dunked on hard by Marvin Bagley at the I mean that was in the first 2 minutes of his first summer league game. He came back and had a good game after that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of cat that would have broke. I mean, you get dunked on 2 minutes into your NBA career. Yeah. Like, you know, that at least shake you for a half yeah. or two. But he he came back, you know, he battled back and ended up having a good game. I mean, still, the, the to me, the biggest key to the Lake, Lakers, if they still don't get Kawhi, we're going we're gonna to bring up, we're going to talk Kawhi later, is is the development of Brandon Ingram. He has to be. Yeah, he's, this is he's, his yeah, time he's now. Gotta, now he's yeah. got to step into that number two role. Let LeBron, we know LeBron going to do him, but Ingram got to be that, that yeah, second. Yeah, until that second something game. else is. Yeah. I mean, I would, uh, I just, I, I would. I know they just waited and, you know, waited on PG and that didn't work out. But I, I would have to take my chances again. I can't give up everybody right. to get Kawhi Leonard. Right. And I like Brandon Ingram. I told Brandon, I told people, give Brandon Ingram three or four years. Let his body develop. Because when I, I saw him at the Staples Center, I think his freshman year, I mean, his legs were about this his big. Rookie, yeah, he looked his rookie, That was his leg. So I was like, no, he's got to get into a... But I, I said once he get comfortable, he's gonna he's gonna be a he's gonna, he's gonna be a beast. Um, all right, let's talk about the third big domino in the NBA free agency that shocked everybody, and that's Bookie Cousins. Oh my God, how they let teaming that up with the Avengers? Uh, uh, I don't know how they let Bookie yeah. Cousins oh, go to the, the Warriors. State. Got all the uh, the Golden State fans been hitting me up already. I know y'all out there. I know y'all out there. Yeah, so, well, it's it, the reason it happened because it was a unique situation. He's coming off Achilles injury. From what I understand, nobody really wanted. Now a report came out that Pelicans offered him two years and $40 million. He didn't take it. That's what that's what. Why the, he lied? He said nobody even wanted to talk to him. And they yeah. said the Lakers had tried to contact him. Report. So- DeMarcus Cousins turned down two-year, $40 million wow. extension with Pelicans after injury. So Yeah, why would he turn down $40 million and take five? I mean, well. He's betting on himself. Which He's I, betting on himself. Yeah, but he yeah. shouldn't. Have, he made it seem like nobody wanted me, and I just called Golden State. Well, that makes it, it, make it, make it seem me. like you know, like oh, I, they were the only he option. Talking, I he got. was talking like you hear the reports. He was somebody. He you know he woke up in, uh, in my house in Vegas, and I was a little depressed, and because nobody contacted me, so I contacted Golden State myself. Why would you? Okay, don't He's, say that. If they offered yeah. you forty million, just say. I wanted to try something different. I'm going to bet on myself. Well, he's betting on himself for one year. Which makes sense. It's a smart. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's a smart move by uh, Cuz Boogie um, because he gets gets the rehab. I don't know. Bet on yourself. Or he was on rehab in New Orleans too. That means you know what? No, but he gets a rehab with no pressure. It wasn't gonna be and like, get a ring at the same time because well, he only took five point one million. So he yeah. took a little welfare but, deal. But then yeah, but but the other hand is that in a year and a half. Extra, he would have made another thirty-five million in just a year and a half. Let's say yeah, he yeah. didn't come back till December, yeah. January. For those two years, he'd yeah. actually only played a year and a half, and he was gonna make forty million. Whew. 
How you turn that down? Yeah, but it, he, I think he just wanted to. I mean, I guess he's he wanted to win. He, you know, and he, he ain't never been on a, uh, yeah. a, a winning team. Yeah, he so wanted to get, I that, he get that. that ring. There's no pressure on him. I can come back when I want to. You know, come back January, February. He's saying the beginning of the season. He's not gonna be ready to begin of the season. But the thing is, he got to hope he come back okay. Because if he yeah. don't, and his game ain't the same, well, that's then, the, that's the bet. Yeah, that's the bet on. He's betting on himself that he can come back and and be himself and uh um and get that big money next year, which. Look at the Lakers still got room. You know what I mean? Lakers did all. That's one thing we didn't talk about. All of them were one-year deals. Yeah, Rondo yeah, yeah. one-year oh, deal. Yeah, they yeah, all one-year yeah. deal. So yeah. they're keeping their options open for Kawhi and for uh, for Boogie next season. You know what I mean? So nah, I don't know. That's one move. That's one right there that I wish the Lakers would have made because, you know, he taking money like that. They should have, uh, you know, they should have offered it because it's almost – so, you know, you got to subtract. Well, you can't just let them let get everybody. But I don't know. People mad at Golden State. I ain't mad at them because yeah, yeah. everybody else had a chance to offer yeah. him some bread. So Did you see the meme of uh, um, Durant, uh, Steph Curry laughing, talking about uh, we gave them JaVale McGee. We got, we got Boogie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ain't that a bitch. Oh, my God. So, yeah, back to – I kind of want to uh, backtrack to uh, uh, LeBron again. As a Sixer fan, we were – you know, we had our fingers crossed. Yeah. We thought we had a chance, especially yeah. when they said we we had a meeting with him. Mm-hmm. They said six was meeting with him. I was like, oh shit, we got a chance. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm listen. I thought he was gonna stay in the East, and I thought, listen, it's two teams in the East. It's Boston and Philly. They got the feature. Mm-hmm. He's not going to Boston. I'm thinking Philly is the perfect. You know, we got we got two little young studs, so he don't have to be the man man. You know, he can, you know, he still can be the man, obviously, but he got niggas he can depend on, you know. The, yeah. And B yeah. can get the, you know, and people were talking about can can Simmons and him play together with the ball. I thought they could work all that out. I thought Philly, you know, would be a perfect but, opportunity but the, for but, him. But I mean, well, hoop wise, but, but the whole yeah, family didn't want to go. Yeah. So what he's supposed to be in Philly and his no, family yeah, no. be in LA. Off the court, yeah, I can understand why he didn't pick why he didn't pick. You know what uh, that should lead to. You know. He in Philly, family in L.A., that lead to... He hanging out with A.I.? Oh, man, that lead to some side hey, hey, bitches Brown, coming through. Hey, Brown, Brown, A.I., this A.I., come on over. We got yeah. a party at the crib. Yeah, yeah, that... that he, Dr. Yeah. J already over here. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. J got the old bitches over here. Come on over. Yeah. Man. <laughs> hey, did you ever hear that story about Dr. J fucking uh, JaVale McGee, Mom, Pam? And they said JaVale was embarrassed because... I can she see put, She put the shit like... They was at an event and, like... There was some pictures. I guess she was just all over Dr. Yeah. J, like, you know, Why? hanging all over him and shit. And he like, damn, mom, you doing this shit out in public? Well, you remember the All-Star game when she gave him a kiss, but you don't remember that, the All-Star game? What happened was they were having a slam dunk contest, and Doc was one of the judges. You don't remember this? Yeah. And and what happened was, I, was what, what, what is his mom name, Pam? Pam, yeah. She was doing something where she had to come out, and she was what she was doing, it was four judges, five judges, whatever, you know, all them legends. Yeah. And Doc was at the end. So they brought her out to do something. Where she she went by everybody and gave him a kiss because she knew all of them. So she went and uh, she was giving him a hug. And so she's going down the line. So when she got to Doc, Doc was talking to somebody over here. So when she so so mind you, you the guy next to Doc. She hugging you, gave she giving everybody a kiss on the cheek. So Doc was talking to somebody over there. So when he turned around, she was coming in, leaning in to get the kiss that she was doing to everybody, and they lips touched. Oh man! And everybody was, you know, it was just like, hey, you know, it was little, but everybody made it, you know, you saw the crowd was like, ah, you know what I mean? And people were like, it was more like Doc wasn't paying attention. His head was turned. Yeah, he came Doc around. Knew, yeah, he was, but he was hitting that shit. So, um, uh, shout out to Joey. He's listening. He said, "No one wants to compete anymore." We're gonna talk about that, Joey. We're gonna talk about that, man. Um, yeah. So it was our, you know, as a Sixer fan, it didn't happen. We thought we may have a chance with PG. You know, but it didn't happen, so it is what it is, <clears throat> But man. Joey, right, how, I mean, nobody, but how can you compete when you can't compete? Yeah, yeah. Imagine uh, imagine the Golden State Warriors versus uh, the Brooklyn Nets game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. Oh, my God. Like, it's like, it ain't even. So let's get back into free agency. Some other, we talked about the, th- the big dominoes. Let's talk about some, you know, some other signings. Uh, Dwight Howard signed a one-year deal with the Washington Wizards. Uh, oh, he I, didn't even. Did you see that this morning somebody wanted to come back to the Lakers, man? Yeah, I heard that he was man, talking to, you fuck know, he was Dwight talking to Howard. He's horrible. I could, horrible stay here. Hold that up, hold bastard is now, horrible. When you talking about horrible off the court, horrible teammate. He actually had yeah. a good season he last year. He had a year decent season, but you Sean. don't want I don't want him on the, you Yeah, don't but want for him. some reason, nobody likes him. No, nah, there's a reason there. Yeah, they was talking on the Like my grandmother always said, everybody ain't lying. Yeah, they was talking about um he's very insecure and he's phony. They was talking um 
they they was talking about this story and they said this kind of breaks down with the White Howard. What he what he about? I guess um. The, uh, the Kamenitsky brothers was talking about this on ESPN. They was like, um, like if somebody say something, like, like let's say if uh, somebody criticizes uh, Kobe, Kobe was uh, he said Shaq yeah. said some about the well, real centers don't do the pick and roll, and they said Dwight Howard heard that and then he didn't want to do the pick and roll with Steve Nash, one of the best pick and roll point guards of all yeah, but time. But he was shook at anything Shaq said ever since they he said tried to they do said the it Superman got to him shit. so much that they said. They said uh, Steve Nash would have got him 15, 20 easy points. Of, like, but yeah. he didn't want to do it just because Shaq said real centers don't do. Like, that's his mentality. Yeah, like, man. He can be thrown off about anything. Hey, that's, see, that's what, when I went to Orlando this weekend and I thought about it, I said, here's where Dwight should have stayed. He should have never left there and uh, he should have stayed there with the rest of the kids mm -hmm. at Disney World, the way he <laughs> acted. Yeah, That's just, what he should have said. That was a perfect environment for it's him. It's just sad. He, somebody said that he had a... They was talking about... Uh, the Kamenitsky brother said he had a dude carrying his bag. Yeah, his toiletry bag. I heard yeah. about that stupid they shit. They said that he would walk in and this be this dude walking after him looking so sad carrying his bag. What See, that's that why lets I don't you know what type of motherfucker he is. That's my... Yeah, it, du Dwayne215 said he's a fraud. You Now, you talking about Dwayne. You talking about... Um, D uh, Dwight Howard, let us know who you're talking about. He said he's a fraud. Um, who else? Let's talk about Jeff Green signed with the Wizards too. Man, give him some depth off the bench. Yeah. I mean, that's all it is. He's just Good a Good thing he just got out of Cleveland. He just wanted to get away from there. Uh, A.B. Bradley re-signed up with the Clippers. Uh, Two-year deal. I like A.B. Bradley. He plays tough. Uh, good defender. Clippers ain't shit, man. They ain't. They 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 about to be. No, nah, Clippers. I worst. think no. Who they got? Clippers gonna surprise people this they year. Ain't gonna surprise. Nobody. Yes, they are. They are gonna surprise. I'm you really, a Laker I'm fan. surprised Doc even uh, signed on to coach them and be a part of this rebuild shit they doing. A.B. Bradley. I'm gonna look at the Clippers roster. They don't have a bad roster, man. You acting like they like they got a bad roster. A roster. Um. Uh, New Orleans Noels signed with the Thunder, backup center, two years. Uh. <laughs> he never panned out. He back his ass. Yeah, up. but he, he's a he's a good rim protector. Oh, shout out to JJ Redick. Since we didn't get uh, LeBron, and then we didn't get a uh, um, PG, we re-signed JJ uh, one year, twelve million. He's a I mean, shooter. He got twenty four last year, right? Yeah, there. he got twenty three. Man, he shout knew. out to JJ Redick for getting thirty six million yeah. for two years. Well, he knew he wasn't getting twenty three. Well, you know they had to. You know they had. Well, no, they but had, I'm they saying they to took care of him money. last year. Yeah, Shit, he can't. They, yeah, he know, but that's why he stayed because they took care of him last year. He knew that, man. Shit. Uh, Clint Capella is still meeting with people. He hasn't, but I think he's gonna resign with Houston. Uh, oh, Derek Rose resigned with Minnesota. Oh, God. Uh, he you know, he's back up. Just ruined the last part of his career. Uh, he's back up point guard. Oh, let's talk about Chris Paul resigning. That's and and in some Houston ways the, was tripping. In man. some There's ways, no way I'd have gave him all that money. In some ways, the Rockets had to ha, had to do it. They had to because they told him they was gonna do it yeah. before he came. And they had to do it that's because the, that's really, the reason he left. Because they almost beat Golden State. Okay, him. look, if you add the what he, whatever he made this year, like twenty some, you add that with the one sixty, that's one eighty. He turned down two hundred with the Clippers, so they got him as close as they could to the two hundred. So that's what he did. And man, I wouldn't have did that shit. Man, that he's last thirty seven. Oh last man, year? that last eighty million them last two years. Oh my God, I hope he. Yeah, I just hope he can stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, I don't wish no, but that boy, yeah, I don't Ooh, know how they're they, they gonna be like. He gonna be, like, he gonna be making. Carmelo he's going to be making $40 million at age 38. No, I think they said 37 at age... No, uh, yeah, well... 40 yeah. million at last year? At age 40 37. Million. Yeah, 40 at 37. Oh, you can't imagine. He's already injury prone anyway. Woo, well, but Houston had to do it. Yeah, but, you know, maybe they can trade him or stretch him the last couple of years. Trade him to who? I who know. else is going to take that... Hefty ass contract, but you know the only stretching they're gonna do with him is stretch him out and hope he don't get hurt. Well, they signed Michael Carter Williams, uh, who can't shoot. But well, I don't understand the Houston Rockets signing him. He can't shoot at all. Uh, but I guess he's gonna play the backup point guard, the former Rookie of the Year. Yeah, uh, let's not yeah. forget uh, Tyreek Evans uh, signed a deal. Let me see, he's with uh, Indiana Pacers, so he's gonna take. Um, uh, Lance Stevenson spot. Yeah, He's take, yeah, basically take yeah. his role. And Tyreek had a pretty good year. Yeah, he last had a year. good year. And so Indiana and Dante Exum uh, resigned up with a uh, uh, the Jazz three years, thirty three million, eleven a year. Oh yeah, that he's was, developing. Yeah, he's been hurt a lot, but he you know when he when he got healthy, he had a, he had a yeah. decent year last. I remember year. I, I wanted the Sixers to take him in that draft too, man. And yeah, and that's about that's really, how you think uh, Levar Ball is feeling today. 
<laughs> what you think Big Baller Brand thinking about all these moves? I'm, you know what? That's a good question, man. I mean, when LeBron there, you got to be a little bit happy. Because yeah, that, the Big Baller Brand sales going to go up too. That should help yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But hopefully he don't get shipped out for Kawhi. I don't think San Antonio want him. No, do they that. don't want him. Yeah. They got Murray. They got yeah. they got a six. You know, they don't want. They got a point guard for the future already. Yeah. But uh, I know Levar sitting at the house like, shit, the shit trying to get Leandro and Lamelo. That shit is looking bleak right now. Well, uh, yeah. Well, well, which the youngest one has still got some potential. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. They took him out of high school, so I don't know what the hell he's doing now. But he'll be when is he's this? homeschooling. Yeah. So is he gonna go to college or? He can't. He already played professional. Oh, he already played professional. So, yeah, they... Yeah, he just stuck. Why did... Yeah, his father. Now, Lamar, you know, I... Why I, would you do some d- you dumb know, shit like that? You know, all the uh, entrepreneurship, the shoes and all that shit, I was down with all that, but I, I wasn't down with taking the youngster out of yeah, high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, you don't do that, man. Out of high school? Yeah. I mean, and I know in other countries, teenagers do play professionally in basketball. Or, yeah. And, uh, you know, so ain't nothing wrong they with start, it. I mean, but you didn't have to do that over here. You know, I mean... You already had enough pressure on him. Now you didn't took him out of high school, and and he shouldn't have took uh he shouldn't have took the other the the middle boy out of he should have let him develop. Well, yeah, let him UCLA, UCLA and let him he develop. He might have turned into a he pro. He might have turned into a pro. Yeah, he really might have turned into LeVar a pro. Levar did wrong. He yeah, tripped he, he, on that. Levar fucked up he on those up moves. On those, yeah. I'm still down with the big baller brand though. But he fucked I still up agree. On but yeah, he fucked up on that. And, uh, uh, the sun. Hopefully, he keep his mouth shut. Because if he talk shit and and Lonzo's still on this team with. With uh, LeBron, then this is where. Oh yeah, they they this trade. Is, no, no, it ain't even that. This is where he's gonna lose. You know, this is where him yeah. and Lonzo gonna get into it. And he gonna fuck around and alienate his son. Mm-hmm. Hey, Levar, chill out. You know, he's been quiet though. He's been quiet recently. We yeah. haven't heard anything about him. So we're gonna uh, the the Phoenix Suns and Devin Booker uh working on a five year max. So it seems like Phoenix. is Oh, he already to signed that. Shit. Oh, he did. So yeah, they trying to on get, the way here. Yeah, hundred fifty eight million or something. They trying to get their thing together. Uh, they, they got a nice little young nucleus. So hopefully they can you know because he was I think he was a free agent after next year. They got so it. Uh, you know he he was mad last week because they traded his, his homeboy and they got him his bread quick. Man, like, they was somebody on the radio was like he give Tyus Etney three million. Just hit. Tyus, yeah. Tyus Jones, give him three million. He happy with that. He ain't worried about a backup, his homie. But you know what? You know what that meant. You said that one hundred fifty eight. He didn't. He don't give a fuck about his homie now. I bet they told him. You know. You know. You. They probably told him they wasn't gonna get rid of, keep him for a minute, and he mm-hmm. probably just wanted to know that they was gonna trade him. I, I, I'm the sure Suns that's got all some it pieces. Was. They got. A, they got a, my man out of Villanova that we drafted. See, Suns and that's what. Uh, and that's what. Uh, you know, Houston lost. Also, they lost Trevor Ariza, man. Uh, shit, the Lakers fuck around yeah. and compete with Houston this year. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was yeah. Let's talk about the West. I, 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 Ain't no reason well, to talk about the East. It's just Philly well, you and know Boston. what? We can't talk. Let's wait till this. Let's wait till we know what the yeah. Because Clint yeah, Capella but, still hasn't signed yet. Yeah, still, but it's from, just Philly and Boston. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I shit, like no matter the Wizards, what happens, I like the Wizards. No matter getting, if a big trade come through, it's still gonna be just Philly and Boston. I like the Wizards. What they, you know, I like them getting Howard. I like them getting Jeff Green. You know, don't sleep. I on think the Wizards. they're gonna have to change coaches, man. Mm, mm, before they can mm. do anything, or they're gonna have to get rid of. Uh, Wall or Bill, because they don't yeah. seem to be going working out too well together. All right, the last thing about the NBA, let's talk about this report that popped up today. Jimmy Butler is fed up with the attitude of the younger teammates of the T Wolves. Call Anthony Towns in particular. They said Jimmy Butler is 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 not is mad at him, and he's not going to resign his extension. So now he might be on the block. Trouble in Minnesota. Minnesota can never get their shit together. I, but see, I, part of it is that you know Tibbs. Thibodeau, you know, he's the coach and the GM, and I just don't like. I mean, it's only a few people that's been able to pull that shit off. I don't like. I don't. I don't want. I want that to be two separate entities. And then so, but one thing I can say is that JB is a real product of Tibbs. So if he feel that way, then that's how Tibbs feel. He didn't just saying this shit, and Tibbs is all happy in the office mm. with Carl Anthony Towns. That's his guy. JB is guy. Right. So that's just like him saying it. The same way when they start talking shit about Kawhi with Tony Parker and Manu. When Manu said that shit, that means it's coming from Pop. That's true. That's true. That's oh, I, we we didn't even talk about Kawhi. We're gonna get on that. But uh, trouble in Minnesota. I don't know. Uh, 
maybe he might be on a maybe he might be on a on a chopping block. They said he doesn't get along with Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. Ah, I'm not sure what that's all about. It's like players like remember Jim Jackson, Jason Kidd, and Jamal yeah. Mashburn. It's like what the fuck is going on? Like what? You know, oh, Andre, the topic is NBA free agency. We talk about NBA free agency. We get into that. But we got some other stuff going what's on good, later on. Vito? So, uh, what's up, Andre? What's happening with you? Um, so, yeah. So, Jimmy Butler, maybe on a, maybe there's some Lakers looking. No, nah, man. They said him and Kyrie want... are real tight, and maybe they Kyrie yeah, might try yeah, to. Go down there, Boston, whatever. Yeah. I don't want no, I don't want nobody who played multiple years with uh Coach Thibodeau, Thibodeau yeah. to just run him in the ground. Yeah. I don't give a damn who it is. I don't want none of his products who've played three years with him or more because they just run if, down. If you're Boston, who do you give give them for Jimmy Butler? Uh, Jalen Brown, I think. Yeah, you got to try to give him Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart is still out there, yeah, man. Yeah, Marcus uh, Smart is still out there. I know uh, He's a tough, too I like, the uh, Lakers can't afford him. Yeah. Philly might need to look at him now. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a tough player. He's not the best shooter, but plays hella hella defense. He's a winner, man. He's a winner, hella defense, man. Let's talk about. I, I thought that was the final one, but I forgot we didn't talk about Kawhi. The whole Kawhi Leonard situation. We didn't talk about Kawhi because Kawhi don't talk. Yeah, he don't talk. This is one of the weirdest situations in NBA history, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't recall anything. I like don't know this. what the hell he. Because by now, any former anybody who was in this situation would have said. Either I want to stay here and let's work this out, or they just said, "Fuck you, Spurs, yeah. get rid of me right now." I mean, it, I think he did. I think his people did tell the Spurs, like we, like I he think the Spurs thought nobody. Could, I mean, he could, he's not talking, but I, I think mean, his he, people he, talk. at this point, I mean, he can handle it anyway. But but it, it just seems like at this point, he should come out and say something. I don't mm-hmm. know exactly what he should say, but I mean, I if, if this was me and I was in this situation, I would either a tell why I'm unhappy. So it can just so people can just know and it, that could just be it or B, uh, just tell yeah. what happened. You know what yeah, happened. Say, yeah, say something. You know say, the what, reason what why I'm your, unhappy yeah. or what I want to be done. Those are the two things. Only two things. I mean, he's got. I mean, you gotta say something, man. I mean, what's Uncle Dennis? Say something, man. Uh, they, you know, it's weird. Uh, but they have to trade him. I mean, obviously, it has to be traded. That, um. They don't want to deal with the Lakers, obviously, because I they mean, don't he, fuck with the Lakers. He ain't even just tripping with the Spurs. He tripping with Jordan about his shoe contract. And I mean, I'm not saying he's tripping. He's wrong. He's, oh, I didn't I know think that. He, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, he, I mean, I think he has valid reasons about his pay compared to other people's pay. But then I think that's where Michael's saying, well, damn, you down in Isaiah, San Antonio. Shout out to Isaiah Washington, the legend. Isaiah Washington, the actor. Yeah. He's watching us now from Grey's Anatomy. What's up, Isaiah? I'll let your boy salute to you, my brother. Um, yeah, Wayne, so what's up, relative? Yeah, Kawhi. They have to trade him. They want too much from the Lakers. They, but it, it's going to get to the point where if I'm, I'm the Sixers, I want him if he's going to sign an extension with us. Now yeah. he's, from what I understand, he's made it clear that he wants to play for the Lakers. So if I'm the Sixers, I don't need him for one year. I don't. I'm not giving up all. I mean, the only one team year. that could really take a chance, and if it didn't work out, would be Boston. Boston. They're the ones with yeah. multiple picks. They're the only one who could take a chance to go with them. But man, the way they played last year, why would they give up uh, one of their young studs and their draft picks? I mean, they could give up the draft picks, yeah. but why give up their young studs? Well, listen again. For somebody who might of, not yeah. stay. Yeah, somebody might. That's, and, the, that's the thing about it. And in it. Boston, you know, Danny ain't smart enough to know it's hard to get brothers to come to Boston and stay, yeah. you know, because it takes a special type of brother to stay in Boston <laughs> and to play in Boston and deal with that shit because they still, it's still racism mm-hmm. going on there right now with, with, with millionaires. They don't give a damn if you got money. So if you're the Lakers, you're the Lakers, what would you give to get Kawhi? You're the Lakers GM. Right now, the most I would give for Kawhi right now, I would give up. Uh, I would give up Brandon Ingram. Ingram, because yeah, they. they I would give up Ingram. Josh Hart. Okay. And I would give up a number one pick. Number one pick. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I'm not giving up Kuz. I'm not giving up. Yeah, they're gonna want more picks. than that. They ain't asking for more from. Philly. Why you need Kuz? Why you need Kuz if you got LeBron and and you got LeBron and uh, Kawhi? Why do you need him? Well, because if they ask for ball, will you give? Because a ball? if you can still keep him and you got them three on the wing, then you got your whole situation taken care of. You got, you know, you got offense. You got more than one. You know, I mean, you got you got off long bodies. That's three of them, and that's what you need to match up with Golden State. It's long defenders. 
Uh, and it's just something, I don't know, you know, just something seems to be special about Kuzma. Now, Ball, uh, Kuzma Brandon, over Ingram. Brandon Ingram might end up being, I can see him end up being the best all-around player over the years, but it's just something big time about Kuz. It's just something big time. Mm. I can feel it when I seen, you know, the when I seen him in the summer league, I was like, okay, this kid's gonna be special. And the fact that he stayed in college, you know, three years or whatever. So he's he's ready right now. And like I said, BI might end up being better, but it's just something special about Kuz, man. You would you give up a, a ball? No. Okay, not ball, so he's not in it. No, it's got to be Okay, a, what if Ingram, Josh Hart, and two number one picks? I might do that. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, can you imagine Lonzo Ball in San Antonio with Popovich and LeVar down there walking the river walk? He would never. LeVar, oh, my God. LeVar would lose his mind. Now, that's a spot that if LeVar, big baller brand, he want, he really want to think. Now, that's a spot where, nah, I was going to say he might be able to get uh, his other boys. Nah, he ain't going to get them there. There ain't a team in the league. He's going to get all three of them on. Yeah. The youngest one still got some potential, but yeah. we'll see. We'll, yeah. We'll see, man. Yeah, there ain't a team in the league. He's going to get all three of them on. All right, man. Let's, all right, so that's the NBA free agency, man. We'll, we will revisit that probably next week, man, with some more stuff going on, man. Let's get into the uh, one of our new sex segments. Uh, we premiered this last week, man, and this is the Toby Hicks True Dope Story. Toby, you got another dope yeah, true yeah, story, man. Yeah, I had actually, it's funny because I had so many situations uh, that I've encountered in my life. I've forgotten about some of them, and uh, one of my homeboys reminded me about this. Like, he had to literally remind me, especially, too, because a lot of my days when I was selling dope and doing shit like that out in the streets and going to prison and all those things, I kind of blocked those thoughts out of my mind. I didn't purposely do it, but, you know, shit just is not there anymore. So <clears throat> I remember I was uh I was I was chilling one day at home and this is when me and my boy uh in San Diego, my boy Daryl Doc Carter stayed together. Shout out to Daryl Doc, Doc Carter. Carter. What's up? Shout you out. You know. And so we were staying together and I was young in my career and trying to get it going. Uh and I was on I was still on probation for people know I think I was on probation or parole from like Ninth, from age 19 to like 35. Mm. So, or 34, yeah, right around there. So I, I was on probation when we lived together. So anybody knows how that goes, you know, uh, the PO, he could drop by at any time, whatever. So I never forget this. It was a Friday night. We was chilling. I had me, a uh, girl I was dating at the time. Uh, Daryl was there, a couple other homies at the house. We slapping dominoes, we smoking weed, we drinking. And all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. And when one of the homies was supposed to come over. So Duro didn't think nothing of it. Doc, where you at? You've been listening every week, and this time I'm telling a story about you. You ain't listening. <laughs> uh, so Doc just opened the door, and I never will forget. Here come my P.O. through a cloud of smoke. <laughs> and I'm like, damn. And so the girl I was dating at the time, you know, she didn't really know how shit worked. And what I mean by that, mm -hmm. when he came in and told her that he was going to, you know, told everybody, like, you know, he cuffed me up. It's smoke in the air. It's just, you know, it's nothing. It's a wrap. And and when he tells her that he's going to have to arrest me, whatever, she was like, okay, talk, okay, baby, I'll be right down to bail you out. And he was like, there is no bail. <laughs> and she was like, looking all crazy. So, um, uh, and it's funny because Duro, like, to this day, we laugh about it because he didn't, you know, he didn't know. But he just opened the door. But either way it goes, I would have been busted because the POC smelled the weed down the hall oh, shit. and everything. So but, the POs uh, just show up at your crib? Yes, they have the right to just show and up you at did, your house. Oh, so you don't know. They just show no, up. No, random. They random come and check and they can give you a piss test at any moment. This was Friday night, like 10 o'clock. Oh, that's, that's so, what you should know. So, that's when they're going to come. No, they no, figure no. He gonna get fucked. He fuck. He getting fucked up Friday and Saturday night. No, but do you, you don't think that these motherfuckers want to work on the weekend like that? They never came oh, at you that had, time. You, you had the superhero PO. Yeah, you know. So, but I will admit he wasn't a real bad PO. But it was nothing he could do. And and what really fucked it up is that he was training another PO. <laughs> and he told me he said, "Man, if I wouldn't have had dude with me, I might have let you slide on this. But I couldn't because, you know, I'm training this dude. I can't go in there. It's a, a house full of smoke. You're drinking. You're smoking. I remember Ice Cube was playing. 
Oh man, it was it was just crazy. So I go to jail and they 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 make me do 90 days, right? Wow. So during this time, um the same girl I had, she stuck by me or whatever. And uh Durrell, shout out to Durrell again. How how cool Durrell was. Durrell paid the rent all the time when I was oh, locked wow, up. Wow. So I made sure I had a place when I got out and shit. Okay, shout out to the doc. That was cool. So, you know, so anyway. So now I, I served my 90 days. I never will forget. A girl showed up to the jail to pick me up, right? And this was the type of jail in San Diego where the inmates could see out the window. Oh, shit. Yeah, the type yeah. shit. You mm -hmm. can see out. So I, they was letting me out. It was, it was just getting dark. Like, just that got dark. And I never will forget. She showed up. In, a, in this short ass dress and she had a banging ass body mm. she showed up in a short dress with no panties on no nothing just this purple dress so she got out the car and she was just standing by the car waiting for me and cats was yelling all out the window they was whistling they was going crazy <laughs> looking at her and shit so then you know I go to the house or whatever and uh, here's where I fucked up like after chilling with her, so then now I I immediately I this is the same day now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like the the very like in a, a short a short span of time. Mm -hmm. So I'm like I'm still hood, yeah. like I'm still like that ninety days didn't do shit. Yeah, I'm still hood. So I'm like take me to the take me to the spot. So I go to where my homies kicking at, mm -hmm. kicking it at. They selling dope. This motherfucker's coming through. All this shit's going down. I mean, mm -hmm. but it, it ain't nothing. I mean, it's the same shit that was going on when I left. You know, so I'm there chilling. I never will forget. Uh, I was waiting on. I had called my son's mother. I was waiting on her to come pick me up because she was gonna, you know, let me see my see my son, right? And shit. So I'm sitting there waiting on her, whatever. You know, she said she'd be there, whatever. She was running behind, whatever this and that. And so she ended up getting there and picking me up, and uh, I leave. And like 10 minutes after I leave, the police raid the spot where I was at. Oh, shit. Yeah. So they literally raid. They take everybody to jail, whatever. And they hit my boys. And they was like, yo, man, my homeboy who spot it was. And uh, he told me recently like, that we brought the story back up. And he told me, he said, man, when they had me handcuffed, he said, the only thing I could think of was, damn, I'm glad Toby left. Because I would have been back in jail the same back day that I that I got out. God How damn. could I explain that to anybody? <laughs> my family, I mean, I got my kids. How could I explain that to anybody that I, went, out. that I went to jail, to, back to jail the same day? Well, that is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So let me, uh, when Daryl opened the door, for what reason did he open the door? Because he thought, you know, because we hide, motherfucker, was, somebody else was supposed to come over. So oh, he so opened the door without looking just, through the people. Now, could he have closed the door on the PA? No, nah, no, nah, it was too late. PO, he couldn't. Nah, nah. They walked nah, in? Yeah, they had guns drawn. You know, they come in with guns. They don't come in. Saying yeah. how you doing? Yeah. Oh, for real? Yeah, they come I in know for POs real. I was, was doing that. Yeah, they don't know because they don't know what. Yeah, they come in for real. Yeah, it ain't God no bullshit. Yeah. All right, so whoa. Hey, Steve, I just told a story about uh, almost going to jail the same day. Shout yeah. out to my homie Steve Turner who reminded me that that shit almost happened. I had forgot. That I got is so a, many yeah. dope stories. That is the Toby Hicks true dope story, man. And that, listen, man, pretty soon, man, we're going to start filming these stories, man. We're going to get a film crew together. We're going to start, like they did the Charlie Murphy thing. We're going to start filming these uh, stories, man. So um, um, shout out to the armed forces, man. You know, we do this for you guys, man. Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, um, the um, uh, the National Guard, you know, this is this is your podcast, man. So uh, we salute your service, man. And <laughs> ah, oh man, I'm just tripping huh. on Alfred. Uh, shout out to Alfred Robles. And he said Jamal act like they ask you how you doing when they show up. Yeah, he tripping off. Yeah, they come in with guns. What if I? What do you I, know? Hey, Alfred Robles, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not a criminal. I don't know nothing about that. I'm. I don't know. Nothing. I just thought, you know, they not. I thought they call you when they was outside and be like, "Hey, I'm outside." Come hey, on Jamal out. ain't never been in jail two days, so yeah, <laughs> combined time. So yeah, he don't know about that shit. All right, so let's get into the dope of the week, man. The dope of the week uh, this week. Uh, Toby Hicks is a woman by the name of Allison Edo. You know, who Allison Edo is uh, Toby Hicks. She is the latest. Yeah. 
white person who and called the cops. And why she look like the other white lady? I know she do kind of look like the, and I heard they from the same area. They from, from the Bay Area. I swear when I seen that shit, I said, damn, she didn't did it again. She can look, she looks kind of, they all these pot belly, uh, uh, Smurf looking. But go ahead, man. Tell this story, man. Cause yeah, this is she ridiculous. called the cops on an eight year old selling water on a hot day. Who the hell calls the cops on an eight year old selling hot, selling, selling, selling water? So I guess this is San Francisco, and I thought San Francisco was supposed to have been, you know, progressive. I thought that's this is where it's all happening at a lot. This ain't you thinking it's Mississippi, Alabama? Yeah, now, this is San Francisco. Uh, they gave her the nickname Permit Patty because she called the cops on an eight-year-old girl who... So I guess what happened was, I guess she was in her apartment, you know, doing whatever she doing, resting, and the girl is out in front of the apartment selling water. So her, and her mother is out selling water, you know, and maybe they like, hey, I got water, I got water. So she just, this People white are- woman just said, just decides you shouldn't be selling water in front of in front of my apartment. I think that the the girl lived there. So it wasn't like they was just found an apartment. They lived there. They just decided to hustle, make some money that mm-hmm. day. Um so she called the police on a little girl and her mother or the aunt of the eight-year-old girl recorded it. So they caught her. Uh, um, and let me tell you something. Allison Edo life has been hell ever since. They She has been uh, uh, named Permit Patty. That's a little hashtag name. Permit Patty. Because remember, it was barbecue something. Mm-hmm. Um, so she is Permit Patty. Now it comes to find out that she's the CEO of Treat Well Health, which is some kind of cannabis company that makes cannabis products for for animals she is the ceo of that and the, the company has got so much backlash that people calling the company she got to lose going her. online and she resigned she yeah. resigned the ceo now then this chick cost her her job yeah dumb ass now the thing about it is she this happened like i think on a friday by monday it hit all over <clears throat> you know so Tuesday, she went on the news crying, of course, like, oh, oh, it wasn't nothing about race. Um, no, it was just she was she making She would have never called the police on the eight-year-old a- a- white exactly. girl. She Everybody needs to stop that, that shit. It was not about race. Um, it was just about, uh, you know, um, I was I, I couldn't get rest. I heard this, it was just noise. And and then she said, I did, really didn't call the cops. I know I said I, I didn't call the cops. I actually was just calling the building manager. Well, it turns out the bitch lied. She did call 911, and they released the tape of her calling out. So she tried to go on the news wow. and say that she didn't. I mean, and why did she act like anybody anybody with common sense know they got them tapes? Yeah, like, so they what's got, wrong with you, bitch? So they got her 20 seconds. They got her. She lied about calling the cops. You know, they she don't know that they record everything. You dumb bitch. So, yeah. So she lied. So, yeah. So, you know, I'm glad all the heat she getting now, good. Good for her. And white people, we have talked about this before. Uh, just after this, uh, they called the cops on a boy who was mowing the lawn. What happened was he was mowing. A little boy, little black boy had a, mow, a lawn mowing business. And I guess he was mowing the wrong lawn. Like he thought on he was supposed to. On okay. accident. And the, the couple, instead of just coming out there to saying, hey, young fella, uh, this is what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, um, and they would have fi- figured out, no, you have the wrong lawn. That's them. Yeah. They called the cops on him. <laughs> so, yeah, this shit is wow. just getting ridiculous, man. Wow. Uh um, yeah, this, uh, listen, white people, I, we talked about this before and we're going to talk about this th- again. Stop calling the fucking cops on us. Stop it. Stop that bullshit. That's Stop crazy. calling the cops on us. Damn. I ain't seen Jamal get mad. Yeah. Like, uh, Jay crazy. Dice said, yeah, that's crazy. She was bugging, uh, permit Patty. Uh, yeah. J- listen, so permit Patty, you are the dope of the week. Allison Edo. Fuck you, and I'm glad your company. And what happened was, I guess she sells these products in stores. Stores started taking her products out. Like, because motherfuckers, Black Twitter did what they do. They got online. They found out who she went, what she do. They started calling the company, started calling companies who that's work what, with her company. That's what she get. And they was like, hey, and the companies, like, as one company, uh, they put out a statement like, we no longer selling her products in our stores. That's what she get. Yeah. That's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, uh, yeah. Barbecue Becky, Permit Patty, and Pool Patrol Paula. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you remember the Pool Patrol Paula. Yeah, this is this is uh uh this shit is ridiculous, man. This is you know Permit Patty is the latest in the ugly crowd. Is it people just these white people just feel that they can just call the cops on us for any little thing, man? This is this is this is Trump America. Actually, that's what it is. Yeah, it's yeah, America, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is some bullshit, man. So you are the dope of the week, Allison Edo. Uh, 
Um, all the hell that you're getting. And it's funny because she knew she was in the wrong because when the aunt started filming her, she tried to, I don't know if you saw the video, she tried to duck behind her. She was on the phone trying to duck behind the shit. She knew. And they ain't going to lie and say she didn't call the cops like they ain't yeah, going to bust her Exactly. I, um, uh, yeah, so that's it, man. Um, yeah, she fuck got, uh, she got to move now. The other lady, Barbecue Becky, I haven't seen her. She she dipped out somewhere because I think she she worked at Stanford. She was like a teacher, a professor at Stanford, and ain't nobody see that bitch since that bitch moved. Now, to I mean, Sweden. now you a professor at a university, and that's how you act. Yeah, yeah, now that's what you get, man. Um, so listen, man, this is it. Uh, so anything else? We yet? Yeah, yeah, any place this week or anything or? Uh, man, it's 4th of July. We, oh, yeah, fine. Yeah. It's 4th of July yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, 4th of yeah, July. To, shout out to all, all uh, 4th of July. Uh, happy 4th of July, everybody out there. You, are, uh, you going we, anywhere? You barbecuing anywhere? Uh, tomorrow I'm at uh, Ren River, uh, Ren, uh, Wind oh, River right. Casino yeah, in yeah. Reading. Yeah, tomorrow yeah. night. But by the time they hear this. It'll yeah, be, yeah, 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 it'll be over. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, y'all, yeah, ain't no need to tell y'all to be safe. It, uh, if some shit didn't happen, it will be <laughs> already done. But uh, we hope you were all safe, and hopefully nobody, uh, you know, did no shit with no fireworks. Hey, listen, um, yeah, please be, yeah, be, be careful, safe, man. Because we're going to clown you next week. My homeboy, man, he almost died with some fireworks one time. I remember you told that story. Yeah. You told it, yeah. You told it. You, did you tell that story no, last week? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, you did tell a story. Yeah, you see, Toby tells so many stories he don't even know you. Yeah, told. and I smoke weed, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I might. Yeah, you told. I this. might say the same shit uh, <laughs> every I, week. I don't know if that was the Toby dope story of, but you, yeah, you, you told that story, and we got to still hear the Tom, Tommy Davidson story too. We got to. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, we got so up. many. Yeah, we got so many. We got stories, so many man. dope stories, man. So listen, uh, if you're listening to us, please um, uh, rate us, uh, subscribe to us, rate us, and leave a review. Leave a review, and listen. We have T-shirts. If you go to iTunes and leave a review, a good review, go to our Instagram page, Dope Dealer Podcast, and we will t- hit me up on the DM and sh- you know take a picture of your view of your review, and I will send you a T-shirt. We got some plus twenty one T-shirts. Uh, just give us your size, and we will mail it out to you. So you can get a free T-shirt, some dope T-shirts. All you have to do is go to iTunes and leave a review. Please subscribe to us, rate us, and review us. Um, uh, you can if you want to call us, you want to talk to us. 818-916-1818. One more time. 818-916-1818. Yeah, listen. Shout out to uh, Juan Montoya, hey, man, and uh, we praying for your mom. You, I know I heard you. Uh, she was sick, so uh, prayers out to your mom, Juan. Yeah, shout out to Juan. Yes, one of our uh, loyal listeners, man. Um, shout out to Retanya Moore, one of our loyal listeners. She's out of the hospital, man. Remember, she was in the hospital, and she's home now, and it just moved, too. So shout out to Retanya Moore. Um, shout out to our sponsors, man. Dome and Cheap Movers, uh, the number one moving company in San Fernando Valley. Dome and Cheap Movers, that's our sponsor. And uh, we also looking for sponsors. So please, if yeah. you want to sponsor us, hit us up, man. Our Instagram page is Dope Dealer Podcast on Instagram, Dope Dealer Podcast. Uh, we're looking for sponsors, man. So hit us up and we will shout you out. Uh, we Our audience is growing and growing. So please, you yeah, want to. Yeah, we appreciate y'all. Yeah, you want to become. Tell a friend. Yes, you want to become a sponsor. And me, as you know, me and Toby Hicks are uh, veteran comedians with a lot of TV credits. So please, if you want to book us, I'm at Jamal Doman on Instagram. Jamal Doman, J-A-M-A-L-D-O-M-A-N. At Jamal Doman on Instagram. Hit me up if you want to bring me bring me to your city or bring us to your city. Where you at, Toby? Toby Hicks, T-O-B-E. H I X X at Toby Hicks. Yeah, yeah, the Dope Dealer Podcast Comedy Show is coming to a city near you. We we booked some in uh, um, in San Diego. I think late September we're gonna be down there. Uh, we're trying to book other stuff, man. So please, if you want to bring us bring us out there to your city or you know do your event, we are here, man. Uh, Dope Dealer Podcast. Yeah, Dope Dealer, we here for you. Yes, man. So shout out, listen, man. We love you guys, man. Once again, the Armed Forces, man. Uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Yes. Uh, uh, hey, now, shout out to uh, Pat Wilson and uh, Alex Elkin. They overseas right now. Shout out to them. Okay, yeah. Shout out to Pat Wilson. Uh, shout out to all of them, man. Um, listen, we'll see you. Uh, thir- uh, we, well, you know this drops every th- every Thursday. Uh, so episode twenty, episode y'all. twenty. Yeah, thanks for rocking us for 20, twenty weeks. Yes, in episode twenty five, we got a very special special guest. Episode twenty five, very special guest, man. We love you guys, man. I'm Don't Jamal do Dope Don't Toby Dillis. Hicks. Now 
this that might be music giving you different flows Rapping straight out of North Philly, we chase the gritty gold Niggas be moving small, wait man, that's a shitty goal Rather blow up on the charts, two million records sold How you say you throw, you pussy, cause you was on your soul Ain't no TLC